Hi guys. I just did my first live. Oh, well first is to say happy Vlogmas Day 31, December 31st. Happy New Year's Eve, everybody. Um, but I just did my first live. Just got it posted. A bunch of my favorite people were in there. Well, I was happy. Y'all don't know. Y'all made me real happy. Those that join me. My niece. Thanks, Curb. Anyway, so... This would be short and sweet because I was on there for quite a long time. I was so happy. I loved it, though. I can't lie. Like, I have it like a star. No. I like talking to y'all. That was so nice. Anyway, so... Vlogmas 31. Let me get this done. So, let's see what we're going to talk about. I wrote it down. Okay, maybe I didn't. Maybe I did. Did I write it down? Okay. So... One, I was watching Jane of Scraptastic Yarn Podcast, and instead of resolutions or goals, she said intentions, and I love that. Do you know why? Because goal is something that, yes, you strive to achieve. You have a weight goal, you have a, and that's okay to have a goal somewhere. I want to be this, but you should never give yourself a time, as far as I'm concerned. You should never give yourself a time. Or at least a reason, give yourself a reasonable, don't say within such and such. But an intention is more, it's better than to me a New Year's goal or resolution. Is if it's stuff you want to do throughout the year, as long as your intention was good and you tried to get to that, then great. You accomplished your intention. Because you intended to do it, but something we all know life gets messy. Something interrupted it and didn't get done. So I love that idea. So I'm going to start using that. Instead of New Year's resolutions or goals, I have New Year's intentions. So I told y'all my intentions for my channel, my intentions for my crochet, my life intentions for this year. Get organized is the biggest one. And get healthy. I necessarily, I, I need to lose some of the weight, but I just need to get healthy. I don't feel good anymore. And some of that stuff's not going to go away because it's just there. It's small, big, whatever. But um, my weight doesn't help it. So there you go with the intentions. Um, uh, my personal life. My intentions are to make the people who are good to me and are important to me I, I i intend i'm going to try my very best to make them feel appreciated and those that made me feel crummy i'm just gonna try to move on and not be a hateful person do what i gotta do and be done so that's that um I really can't think of any other intentions or goal, however you want to look at it, that I have. Um, just get more active, get more, and then my crochet. So I want to give you my year in review, but let me pause this because I believe my dogs need to come back in now, and then I'll be back. Okay. I think I'm recording again. Yes, I am. Okay, so lay down. Chill out and lay down. So, um, oh, stay hydrated. That kind of goes with the health thing, but um, I'm not doing that today. I've had two big cups of coffee. I had a lot of caffeine because I have a lot to do today. So instead of ringing in here with alcohol, I'm ringing it in with caffeine. But right now is Diet Pepsi in my cup. I have a little bit of coffee left in that pot, and it will probably get drank. But that's what's in my cup today. I know it's not Thirsty Thursday, but it is New Year's, and there's no alcohol added to that. Just caffeine. Just I picked. So, okay, get back to this. Okay, so my year in view. Oh, well, I have 220 subscribers. Well, the last I looked. I may have more or less since my live, because it's a little. Um, I started my channel on November 3rd. So almost two months I've had my channel I was very nervous to start it scared to death in fact 
almost like I was doing an audition. But I had watched Crochet or Crochet Rocks with Tracy. And I loved watching her lives. I loved communicating with her and with other crafty people. And my first live today was great, guys, because we didn't just talk about crochet. We talked about wanting to learn to knit and Beto and her beautiful, expensive knitting needles that she inherited and she doesn't knit. That sounds like something would have happened to me. Um, maybe you'll learn to, like you said, maybe you'll learn to knit better. But um, I, uh, we talked about lots of stuff, and probably if there were some men in there, they got a little more, learned a little more than they wanted to. But I loved it because we talked about life stuff, and to me, that's part of. Like Tracy talks about her, her husband and her family, and like we have a little community here, and y'all are my friends. Not my subscribers, but my friends. So I truly enjoy. I don't just enjoy making my videos. In fact, they cause me to get a little anxious, in case I didn't know. But watching you guys, I love. And I have a goal. That is something. I do have an in intention. That is, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to challenge. Everybody's putting a challenge out there. I'm going to challenge everybody. I'm not going to say start watching new people, although I, you know, that's something I'll do. But I want to start, the ones I'm already subscribed to, I want to start watching as much as I can. And when I do watch a video and I find something that I want to, I'm going to comment so they know I watched. Because I know I feel good when I know someone has watched my videos. When someone, um, when someone comments or something and I know they were there, because the likes don't always show up, you know. You get the idea. Then I know who commented and then I, you know, I can respond to them. And so I'm going to try to start doing that more on the ones that I subscribe to. I added a bunch today that I just, I subscribed and I'm going to check them out. And I never unsubscribe. I mute my subscription and my notifications. If you're one that eh, I, I don't enjoy, enjoy watching or but if you either cause me anxiety when I watch you, and it doesn't have to be a bad thing, or if you say there are offensive people out there, if you're offensive, I will unsubscribe. Those are the two things. If for whatever reason your channel caused me anxiety or you offend me, and I'm not easily offended. So if you offend me, I will unsubscribe because I have my own personal beliefs and just like everyone else does. Okay, so my year in review. Started November 3rd, my channel. Did my very first live today, December 31st, 2019. Woo! Um, I, uh, I hit quite a few craft fairs this year, so I'm proud of myself for that and made it through without losing my stuff all the way. You know, my, um, I went to quite a few concerts with my husband and some friends. We went to Metallica, my husband and I did, in March for my birthday, but it's his favorite band and he had never got to see them. So we got to see them for, I think it was March 2nd that we went. And my birthday's March 6th, so it was just a few days before that. We got to go. It was awesome. I became a fan of them. I was not a huge fan. Well, okay, I liked some of their songs, but we saw Iron Maiden this summer. Um, that is his second favorite band. He needed to see them once. So his birthday present for me was tickets to go see Iron Maiden, and they were very good. It was very theatrical, and I loved it. Like um, some people, okay, like Metallica, the show was good and the music was awesome, but Iron Maiden is very theatrical if you've never seen one of their concerts, and it was awesome to me. We went and saw Kiss. That was amazing, because, you know, I've watched them since I was a kid. I got a thing for Gene Simmons. With the makeup. Not without. But with the makeup, I would think for Gene Simmons. Maybe a sit -tongue. I don't know. But I, his voice is my favorite out of all of them. So we got to see Kiss. That was really cool. Really, they do a good show. One of the most awesome things that ever happened to me. 
is getting to see Kiss just because I remember them from when I was a kid. We saw Hart, Joan Jett, and L. King. L. King is new. She is Rob Snyder's daughter. Very beautiful young lady and has a very pretty voice. So maybe go check her music out. But Hart and Joan Jett, epic legends. And Joan Jett looks pretty damn good for 60. And they all did an amazing job. I, I saw Leonard Skinner and Grand Funk. They were really good. Those are people my daddy listened to. And so it was an honor to get to watch them. So I was real happy for that. Really, really happy to get to see them. We saw those the night before my surgery. And then um, I saw Brett Michaels. It was a free concert. And I literally got to touch his hand. I was so close. Like his sweat could have dropped on me. I got to hold it. I got to touch his hand. Hold his hand. Well, I would have if he would let me. But I got to touch his hand. I got to touch his guitar. He gave me. Didn't just throw it into. He handed me the pick he was using for his guitar. That was awesome. I was so happy. And he. Oh, he's got very pretty blue eyes. Just so y'all know, that's a crush from back in the day for me. More than Gene Simmons. I was in love with some Brett Michaels. And he does a lot of charity work. He's a good man. And his dad had passed away just a few days before his concert. And so I admired him for still going on. Because it wasn't even a paid concert. I mean, I'm sure he got paid. But it was free for us to go watch. And then he did an auction on like his shirt and his bandana and stuff that he wore during the concert because he had performed the night before somewhere else and uh all that money went to charity it went to a diabetes foundation because he is diabetic so i found a whole new admiration for brett michaels in case you don't know him he used to be in a band called poison who i listened to all the i had listened to all the time and they were glam rock my dad thought they were really ugly women I said, no, they're very pretty men. That's what they are. So I'm excited because I hear this year, 20, well, coming 2020, that Poison is going to be back together and in concert. So I am, that's a goal. That's an intention for 2020 is to see Poison if they play. So that's who I got to see. That was my concert year in review. I had hernia surgery. I had an England, England, no. It's hard for me to say hernia, and it was really bad. Like, I had ripped, ripped it. The doctor just kept asking me. I was like, I, I don't know. I said it happened a long time ago because I remember the pain starting, but it wasn't bad, and I just kept blowing it off. Like, mm, no big deal. Until about, like, labor pains, and I was in the emergency room crying, and then it was a big deal because that's the worst pain I ever had was giving birth. So, and so it took a long time to get my referral for my surgery, I got my surgery, and then I ended up with a hematoma that got bigger and bigger. One of the doctor's fault with the hematoma, I don't think, but he didn't listen to me when I went for my checkup. I told him something went right because there was a small knot at the time. Oh, it's just such and such. I have had a good 10 surgeries, probably. I knew something went right, and he didn't listen to me, so that is why I was mad at him. The hematoma finally went away. I still have swelling there, but I'm not going back to that doctor. None of the other doctors will touch me. And I don't have an infection, so I'm going to be in. Some people might think I'm being dumb, but I don't want that doctor to touch me again. If you can't listen to me when I tell you something's wrong, then I don't want to see you. I made a lot of friends on YouTube. It made me very happy. Lost a few friends. Um. My aunt passed away in January. It was my mom's sister. My mom had passed away in August of 2018 of COPD. And her sister passed away in January of 2019 of COPD. And so someday my goal is to be able to start to raise money for COPD research. Partly because I see that in my future. Because I used to smoke. And it runs in my family. But also because. I believe that someone like my mom. 
who took care of people all her life. She was a CNA. She took care of my dad when he was dying. She deserved better than what she got. She got the runaround from so many doctors. And in the end, they wanted her to see another pulmonologist, and she was just ready to go. She was tired of the, oh, we could do this for you. We could do that for you. I know there's not a cure for a lot of things, but there's some things we could research a lot more. And a lot of doctors, if you ever smoked, just blow you off because it's your fault you got it. Well, for one, everybody's young and dumb at one point and does something they shouldn't, even a doctor, just saying. And especially back when my mom was young, they didn't know the health hazards it was going to have. So, enough about that. That was sad, but I lost my aunt. And just yesterday, my cousin Robin could use your prayers because her wife, Kathy, passed away from breast cancer. It finally took her. She had had it, and it went into remission, and it came back this year. And um, she's now with my mom and my Aunt Sherry, and she's flying with the angels. So fly high, Kathy. But um, pray for my cousin Robin. She could use it. Um, I think probably Kathy was the first time she ever felt loved, like really, really loved. And I understand that because I told you I have that with LJ. So, um, we lost Kathy and, um, and then losing friends, I didn't, I lost my friend Tommy, literally like she passed. Um, from what I understand from an infection. And uh, then I have some friends that I lost voluntarily because I'm starting 2020 out positive. And it doesn't mean you're a bad person or I'm a bad person. We just might be toxic for each other or one for the other. Or you make me feel bad about myself. And to me, that's toxic. So I stayed sober through 2019. Probably the first year, entire year, that I hadn't been at least drunk. No, I went sober for a few years. After I had my kids, I didn't drink when they were little. But um, I stayed sober, which was a big accomplishment because I missed my mom a lot. And I ain't going to lie, I kind of wanted to be drunk. We are just talking about shots of tequila. And man, tequila, Patron sounded real good. Some Patron, some salt, and some lime. I'd have been out on that dance floor, Beto, doing a cumbia, believe me. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, so, um, we started buying a house this year. Anyone who bought a house, buying a house, knows what joys that is. No, I'm happy because it's ours, but it's an old house, and there's just a lot that I didn't think through, but where we, we were at was not. If I moved again, I wanted it to be to buy. And where we were at was not good. So, there's my year in review. Can't really think of nothing else. Spectacular that happened. Except for I'm still here. And I will say this out loud. Someone who is a suicide survivor. Yes, I am. I tried to commit. Um, in... 2006, I think. No. Was it 2006? Years ago. Yeah. 2006. I tried to take my own life. Those who are close to me, or who and who are getting close to me. Those who are getting close to me will probably someday know why. And those who are close to me know why. But, um, so, anyone, don't be ashamed. Um, anyone who has ever tried to commit suicide, any year that you are still here on this earth is a blessing. Know that. That there is somebody, at least one, and more than likely way more than one, people, person, who need you, love you, and will be so very lost without you. And I'm glad I lived to find that out. 
I can honestly say 2019 was better than 2018 because I lost my mom in 2018. So if you wrap up 2019, there were some really great moments. I am hoping that I am on the road to becoming me again. But a sober version of me. But me again. And YouTube, you just ain't seen nothing yet. But, um, yeah. I, uh, I'm going to put the link to Scraptastic Yarn Part Podcast Jane. I'm going to put the link to her, the exact video where she talks about intentions, because I just think that's cool. And, uh, tomorrow is my friend Linnea. I met her from YouTube. Tomorrow is Linnea's birthday. And was it Nana? Nana, was it your daughter? That her birthday's tomorrow? So happy birthday to everybody who's having a birthday tomorrow on the 1st. And if your birthday's today, happy birthday. Sorry. Jeez, it's, you know, people still have birthdays today too. So happy birthday. Happy New Year, everybody. I will not see you until next year. Mm -mm. 2020 is going to be awesome, everybody. And for those of you, you who suffer from mental illness, don't be ashamed to tell someone or to reach out and ask for help. And if you know someone who deals with the same thing that you do, or just if you're dealing mentally and you know someone who's not afraid to talk about it, reach out to them. I had a wonderful caseworker when I was in Texas. Everything else sucked. The psychiatrist and everything else sucked, but I had a great, uh, I had a great caseworker who helped me understand a little and who, if she, her name was Krista and it's because of her, I'm still alive. If she would not have put me in a hospital and insisted they keep me there because I'd been in a couple before, but I knew how to lie to get out. I was mad at her at first because I didn't want to stay a whole month, but I needed to be there. And so I'm thankful for her. So you can have a caseworker. I have a great therapist now who I do EMDR for my PTSD. I really think we don't deal with anything else and there's some other things I need to deal with. But right now I'm working dealing with my PTSD. There's nowhere else that does EMDR. So that's who I'm seeing. Um, but I have a good therapist. My husband listens to me. I finally have a man who listens to me and doesn't blow it off as me just being a moody female. And um, a lot of women who are abused suffer from mental illness, even if it's just depression, because who can be happy when you're getting the crap beat out of you, right? So for you, if that's you and you're being abused, Let somebody know that can help you when you're ready to leave. I never turned my abusers in because I knew I wasn't ready to go. And to be honest, I wish I would have. Because now, well, okay, one's passed away. But the other one is just on to abusing other, another woman. So... But who's to say if I would have turned him in? But um, you never know. So even though I felt like I just wanted to be done with him, it took a long time to get him out of my life because he was one of my kids' dads. But um, I really think now that I should have called someone and I should have pressed charges on him. Because now everybody just thinks I'm crazy because I didn't that it didn't happen, that I made it up. It was all in my mind. Of course, he was mentally ill, so it was all imaginary. Well, it wasn't. He even almost had me convinced. But no, it really happened. So, okay, enough moodiness. It's about to be 2020, y'all. And, well, here in New Mexico, it is 4.48 p.m. But it's about to be midnight in a few hours. Some of you are already midnight or going to be in just a minute or two whichever it is happy new year y'all i'm about to go get my cooking on 
and we'll get it done. Do a New Year's dance, everybody. Come on. I know there ain't no music, but, and we already talked about sober Neva can't dance. Drunk Neva couldn't dance either. She just thought she could. I thought a superwoman on the dance floor when I was drunk, so that should be a don't drink and dance kind of commercial. Okay, so take care. I will see y'all in 2020. God bless.